Hey there guys, today I'm going to show you guys how to swap out the 7200 RPM hard drive for a SSD for some boost in performance and boot up time. The SSD I'm using here is the 500GB Samsung A50 EVO. So you will be needing a SATA cable to migrate the data from your hard drive to the SSD. It can be a SATA to USB type A cable to connect to your laptop or if you have a case like I do here you can just go ahead and slide that in there and connect it to your laptop. My casing so happens to have a USB type C cable so I can take advantage of the USB type C port in the laptop and get the fastest speed transfer rate possible. So just connect your cable to the laptop and um, get started. The SSD comes with an installation disk. This laptop doesn't have a disk drive, so you will be needing an external drive. If you got your laptop from the HP store and configured it with the disk drive, you can just go ahead and insert the disk. But for those who don't have a disk drive, you can download the program online. All right, so let's dive in. So on your browser, type in www.samsung.com slash Samsung SSD, or you can just click the link below in my description. For those installing an SSD from other brands like SanDisk or any other brand, they might come with their own cloning software or you will have to look online to see what other free cloning software you can use because this one is only for the Samsung SSD. Okay, so once you're on the website, hover over to the Samsung Magician software and download the Magician software alone or you can download the guide if you like. In the description, it tells you for what model it is and you can see here this is for the Samsung A50 EVO and this is to optimize the SSD once you install it so we will come back to this later. So now hover over to the data migration section and download the migration tool. So now you just have to open up both the applications and set them up. So make sure the new SSD you're going to use doesn't contain any data because it will be overwritten. So just make sure you move that data somewhere else or if you're starting off with the fresh one you're all set. A few tips before we begin the cloning of the mechanical drive onto the SSD is to have a backup of your drive in a flash drive disk or in any other storage device in case anything goes wrong. So pause the video and go ahead and back it up. The mechanical drive could also serve as your backup if you don't delete its contents after you swap it out and if you don't intend on using it. If you are having a migration not successful notice midway of the process, it may be due to the firewall preventing the migration to be successful. On my first attempt, after 15 minutes into the migration, I got a prompt saying migration was not successful, so I disabled the firewall and after that, there was no issues. Okay, so after you finish with the installation of both of the programs, Go ahead and look for the Samsung migration software and open it up. So the process took about 30 minutes to migrate the data that I had from my hard drive to the SSD. It was not that long because I only transferred over 42.3 gigabytes at 26 megabytes per second. So don't forget to enable the firewall once you swapped in the SSD. Another good tip is to start with a clean Windows installation because sometimes with some updates like the anniversary update, the partitions are not all copied and so your laptop won't boot up. This happened to me with my Dell laptop, I got the migration successful message but when I went to put on the SSD and power on the laptop it would not boot up. Luckily my brother in law was able to fix this issue. So once you start the migration as long as you don't have more data saved on the hard drive that you will be migrating to the SSD everything should work out fine and the Samsung data migration software will take care of everything. Alright so now that you are done with the cloning we can move on to removing the bottom housing of the laptop. So first you're going to need a Torx 5 bit to remove the 6 screws along the side of the laptop. So I will skip around a bit to save some time. Then you will need to remove the upper silicone feet because they conceal the last two screws which are a Phillips screw. The lower feet don't conceal any screws so don't take those off. You might need some double sided tape to stick them back on or if you take them out carefully you may be able to put them back on just like that and that is exactly what I did. So you can take them out with a thin piece of metal or a razor blade which works really great. But just be careful you're going to be using the razor blade because you may damage the bottom of your laptop. So here comes the tricky part. Take your thin piece of plastic and slide it through the sides of the laptop and work your way around this. And this will take some time and I damaged mine a little bit on each side. So once you got the back out after 30 minutes of trying and a few minutes of being frustrated you will need a small Phillips screwdriver. Okay so once you pry open the back panel set it to the side and remove the SATA connector from the hard drive. 
I found it a bit easier to remove the screws holding the hard drive down to the laptop and then removing the SETA connector. So take your number two screwdriver and remove the two screws holding down the hard drive and they are crisscrossed from each other. So now proceed to remove the SATA connector from the hard drive. Be very careful not to pull too hard or you will damage it. You will see a small gap and gently tug from each end. So once you take that off, remove the screws on the side of the housing and take out the hard drive. So now take the SSD and screw it into the housing. Then connect the SATA connector to the SSD and then put the two screws that hold down the housing. So once you're done with all that, put on the back panel but don't screw on the screws yet. We have to make sure everything is running good so you don't have to reopen it and cause more damage to the bottom of your laptop. If everything is running great, you can screw it back on. If not, go ahead and take out the SSD and put in the hard drive and redo the migration. So if the laptop boots up, you can go ahead and put back the rubber feet. Don't be like me and misplace it. Put it somewhere where you'll find it. I misplaced mine and looked all over for it and I couldn't find it because it was stuck to the side of my arm. Okay, so once you put the rubber feet back on, go ahead and flip the laptop over and power it on to see if it does boot up. And if it does, you'll notice how fast it boots up. It boots up almost instantaneously. So now go ahead and find where you saved the Samsung Munition software and open it up to optimize the drive. Here you can check your sequential write and read speeds if you want to see what speeds you are getting. If they are low, you can go ahead and optimize the drive. So go to the OS optimization and choose what you want. I want maximum performance, so I click on that. This will apply all the settings required to give you the best performance in the laptop. So click on apply and then after a few seconds, it will tell you to restart the system and do so. And that is it. After it reboots, you will now have the option in your power management, the Samsung High Performance. This will drain your battery more, but it will give your computer some serious performance. Good luck with your new and improved laptop. Alright guys, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.